AI, right? Um, all the bullshitters out there talk about AI, all, uh, and surprisingly this time, a lot of smart people also talk about AI. It's not one of those, oh, it's the grifters. Uh, it's just grifters, it's like, oh, it's the digital transformation, uh, um, I don't know, all the trendy stuff there. There's, there's sm some smart people looking at AI and saying, this might be a thing. So it's just normal that some of you have come here because of, hey, there's, there's a connection with AI, it's also with UX, so we want to make this happen. Um, so it's just normal that this is consuming so much of our uh, headspace. I've been working with uh, large language models a little bit before, some, some good months before ChatGPT came out. So I, I remember when I joined, I, I worked at Babel, which does machine translation uh, uh, for customer support with human in the loop, all of that. And I remember my first meeting at, at an, uh, uh, when I was there, we went to an hotel kind of leadership meeting and all. I was kind of the junior PM. Uh, there, and I asked Grasse about GPT-2, GPT-2 at the time. Now we're on 4, 4.0, oh, all of that thing. Because there was this sense that AI is starting to be able to do tasks that we thought were human exclusive. That this is not the kind of thing that AI will. Okay, AI can optimize uh, delivery of ads. Okay, we're okay with that. AI can infer some uh, prediction line in a, in a graph. Yeah, we're okay with that. But this kind of thing of AI talking, like seems human, was something that was out of the scope uh, uh, of what we felt computers were able to do. And now, Every day I talk to a computer, the computer replies back to me, now with voice, and we kind of got accustomed to that. But my talk is about synthetic users and about humans. This was a provocative um, uh, title, as you can imagine, in the same way that we have user research without users on our website. It's provocative, it's intentional. And my argument here with the provocative and intentional is that humans have some kind of patterns also in terms of behavior, in terms of what, um, what brings them energy, what brings them outrage, and we can leverage that so we're not, although each one of us as an individual is quite unpredictable as groups and as a society and as different entities, we have some patterns. And that's essentially the argument for synthetic users. I'm going to go a little bit deeper on the topic later. But for now, first of all, I want to know who of you have heard of synthetic users? Okay. And who of you have, or even if not synthetic users, of this idea of large language models pretending to be people? Okay. So, so, we know, so we know what we're talking about specifically here today. I'm going to do a really quick demo of synthetic users. Main interface, quite shitty, needs a lot of improvement. Um, it, it's just the way it is. We're a startup. But this is kind of the interviews we can run. I'm going to focus on this research goal one because I think it's the one that we do better now. And uh, this research goal one, I just need two things. I need to know who do you want to learn about, what kind of people, what kind of demographic, psychographic, um, whatever you want to learn about and what you want to learn about them. It helps a lot. If you have an example that I can use, I can also kind of go with one uh, out of my own head. Learn about investors. Okay. <laughs> so, <laughs> investors. Age range, investment experience, specific industries, any narrowing that we know it's essential to do good research. Investors as a whole is quite a, a diverse and, and blobby let's entity. Say at least, let's say five years in investment. Focused on industries like, it's not gonna be very selfish. Uh, <laughs> Focus on ID and security. ID and security. Okay. What do we want to learn about that? Uh, their investment patterns, for example. Okay. 
any specific geographies? Where the money is, you ask. Okay. <laughs> so, <laughs> what you saw here was something that we built, this kind of conversational interface, because we got a lot of people that came to our product and were like, who do you want to learn about? People. And I'm like, oh my God. <laughs> Six billion, there's quite some diversity there. Can it be a little bit more specific? So we built this, but you don't really need to use this when using the product. You can just click continue when you do your thing. Um, so let's run some interviews. I'm gonna go with 10 to show this. So right now what my system is doing is looking at a better specified audience, but there's still diversity there, right? There's still some parameters that would uh, uh, allow us to segment that audience. And my system is trying to figure out what those might be, and then it's going to generate 10 synthetic users with diversity within those parameters. So the parameters that it went for uh, on this particular case were investment strategy preference, risk tolerance, technological proficiency, network and industry connections, and motivations and um, motivation and investment goals. So these were kind of five, what we call dynamic parameters, it's a fancy bad name, um, for us to create, to not to create, but to surface the diversity that exists within that group. Because we, we sometimes forget that as, as well defined my audience might be, there's still diversity that I might fail to capture. And in particular, I've, I've seen a lot of people ask me, hey, so why should I use you and not ChatGPT? ChatGPT is 20 a month. So you're asking like 2K uh, or something. I'm like, yes, because you go to ChatGPT and you tell it investors focused on ID and security in the US. And if you just do every conversation again and again, you're gonna be in the same space. And with this, I'm gonna try, I'm tr bringing diversity that exists out there in the world here. You can edit the params, you can delete them, you can add new ones, all of that, no, 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 no. Okay, the interesting part. So right now, what's happening is that for each of these 10 interviews, I generated not only the synthetic user that I have here, oh, right, 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 but I generated also a kind of synthetic researcher that took my original goal has access to the profile, has access to the high-level audience, and is going with into questions to try to bring clarity to what was my research goal. So re this one went for what recent trend or innovation um, influenced uh, an investment decision. This one went for kind of the same. This is uh, what specific factors, factors did led you to invest in ID and security sectors. What recent trends? So they're all exploring what was kind of the recent stuff that they're looking at because we want to understand their patterns. And although they start kind of in the similar space, if you then read the interviews, what you see is that they start in this nucleus and then each interview ends up branching out to a different problem space or to a different area of interest that we might have. And this is kind of what we do is we help, and as you can see, 10 interviews ran in like 40 seconds. And what we do is this, we help bring the best that these models already have uh, to help companies, to help product people build products that bring value. I'm gonna show you the report, but I don't want, I, I'm not here today to talk a lot about my product. Just, I just wanted to demo it to you so you could see what it does and why we're, we're building this. The reason why we started building this, I think it's kind of obvious for everyone in the room. You might disagree that my solution is a good one for that, but sometimes it's hard to find the people we need to interview. Sometimes it's expensive. We don't even have the money. If you're an early stage startup, sometimes you don't even have the money or you don't even have the expertise to do research in a proper way, or you don't have the time because there's kind of a rush to build products and all of that. So there, there are, complexities and there are challenges to doing research that might be barriers to a lot of people. And we know how important it is to do research to build products that really bring value to people. It's, it's essential. I, I, I think it's not essential in a kind of fundamental way because I think there are products out there 
hugely successful that were not research-based. I'm not sure that Brian Chesky did user research in the conventional way before he launched Airbnb, or that Zuckerberg did uh, before he launched Facebook. But as the products grow and mature... I don't think they did any research when they built the iPhone. <laughs> <laughs> no, the, the, the myth of Steve Jobs not doing research, I'm, I'm, he did research in a different way. And which is the point of my talk today, is that research is essential, but research should be about outcomes. We don't do, I, I think I see a lot, you can't imagine the hate I got on, on LinkedIn when, since we launched. I've, I've been called all the names in the world. But one of the criticisms I, that I'm kind of more, ah, really, is a fetishization of the process itself. Is that, oh, but I love talking to users. And I'm like, great, you should have become a psychologist. Um, but no, no, but I think understanding that particular person is what really matters to me. No, you're, you're working on aggregates. What you want is patterns across people. You don't want that particular person. That particular person might give you something that you want to research and you discover there's more, but what you want to discover is patterns. You're, you're paid to bring outcomes to the company. You're not paid to do user interviews. User interviews might be a way to get that, but you're not paid to do user interviews. Your, your boss won't be happy if you uh, end the quarter and say, oh, I did 200 user interviews. And, and he's going to be like, yes, OK, but what value did those interviews bring? So there's, it's one thing that really bothers me. It's a fetishization of the process and not the outcomes. Um, and I have, a, I have a talk here that I, I, I can go for. Um, but most importantly, as Malik was saying, I want this to be a space where we can discuss. So I can drop the talk and we can discuss. If you have questions, feel free to interrupt me. Have challenges, even better. Feel free to challenge me and feel free to ask me. But this is why we built this. So it's really challenging to build successful products. All of this is a, a challenge. I've already touched this. Um, and this is why this product works, to some level. You might challenge the level, but this is why the product works. Because the training data of these models includes a lot of Martin website garbage, a lot of corporate shitty PDFs, a lot of shitty stuff. But it also includes some amazing stuff. I don't know how familiar you are with Reddit. So Reddit is one of the best sources for desk research ever, ever. There's a subreddit almost for everything. Every city in the world at some scale. Every parenting, cars, collectibles, um, UX, uh, developers, all of that. And one of the amazing things that happens on Reddit is that people Normally, it's not like LinkedIn, where people call me an asshole with their name and badge and all. It's like people normally are semi-anonymous, and they can be really open and honest. So there's almost all topics of human experience have been discussed either on Reddit or equivalent, because in, in India it's not the same, in China it's not the same. But <coughs> online, there's footprints, there's fingerprints and, of human experience. I, I, I say this all the time, too. It's, it's a real thing. When my son was born, I found myself asking questions on a Portuguese forum, which is called the Mãe para Mãe, uh, about parenting that I was ashamed to ask my kid's mom, that I was ashamed to, ashamed to ask my parents, that I was ashamed to ask my friends. Which were, so one mine was that I felt comfortable to be honest about my insecurities, my goals, my needs, my challenges, my aspirations. And this is what makes this model so good for tasks like mine. Because in the beginning, when ChatGPT came out, everyone was like, hey, write me a poem in the style of Shakespeare about pastel de nata. And suddenly you have a pastel poem that sounds Shakespeare-like about pastel de nata. And what we did is, this was before, but 
what we, what we thought was, if they can mimic Shakespeare's style of writing, if they can mimic, uh, oh, pretend you're a really good data analyst and tell me how I should analyze a database that has this shape. Um, if they can do that, can we go beyond just the kind of formal pragmatic tasks? Can we go more into the human side of this? And with that kind of data, that's why these models uh, end up succeeding a lot. No, we, we, we don't use Reddit directly. Okay. Reddit was just part of the training data of the, of the corpus that was used to train the base models from OpenAI, Anthropic, um, Meta's Lama, all of those, and it, it's there. And this would go into how these models are trained, which is a, a complex one. So they now are kind of intuition vibe machines. One thing that is really interesting is that you see the providers, want, they want to make these models superhuman. And for me, that's really bad. I don't want these models to be superhuman. I already have a, a really a big challenge in our product, which is the curse of knowledge. So these models know a lot from, for everything. So if you generate a synthetic user that it's a five-year-old, and you ask them, hey, can you explain quantum mechanics? My fucking five-year-old is going to be like, yes. So quantum mechanics is a, a field in physics that explains how particles at a subatomic level uh, uh, behave. And I'm like, you, you're, you're supposed to be a five-year-old. You're not supposed to know how quantum physics works. Um, let me just do a test. So one thing that you can do here, can you explain quant quantum mechanics yeah so this kind of failed okay so this kind of failed mm -hmm. but uh, normally it doesn't fail like this um, but they shouldn't know stuff when you're generating a synthetic user that is supposed to be a person that, high, that doesn't have a lot of education, that lives in a rural area of France, if you ask it about quantum mechanics, I don't know who... Uh, he's an investor. Okay. So, okay. I'm, I, I was thinking that it was failing. He might know. Um, it, they're not supposed to know. So, we, this is already a, a challenge for, for my system. So, we do a lot of work to kind, kind of try to compensate uh, for that. Going back to my talk. So all these companies are focused on making them superhuman. I don't want to make them superhuman. I want them to make exactly as that virtual person would know and would be. So we are focused on here, on the humaneness, and they are trying to move more and more towards that direction. <coughs> So risks, there's a lot of risks in research in which you get bad data, all of that. Uh, GPTs are too generic. With ours, there's some risks, which is I can't give you a number of confidence about any particular answer. I know that it works better for some cases. It works worse for, for some other cases. It's a really well represented population in the training data. Anything US, anything Europe, anything uh, Western countries. I'm quite okay with whatever you throw at me. If you go and try to create synthetic users that are farmers from Botswana, it's not going to perform as well. Because farmers from Botswana don't have a huge online footprint because simply they don't have that much internet access. But it doesn't perform as badly as you might think because these models can do another amazing thing, which is they've read papers from NGOs, academ academia, about farmers from Botswana. So can, they can use that third-party perspective to still role play to a not bad level of accuracy, a farmer from Botswana. But that's one of the risks. The less well represented the population you want to study with this, kind of, with this kind of product is in the training data, the worse the results are. What we forget is that if you were to stop, I, I can't recall exactly if it's 20,000 days or 20,000 years, 
But if a person was to stop and read all the, the, that was used in the, in the GPT-3 training data, it's either 20,000 years. It's years, right. Okay, yeah. so. <laughs> this is the amount of data we're discussing. Uh, so, we have some posts about how do we deal with some kind of biases that we don't want, because some other biases we do want. If you know about availability bias, if you know um, um, any, any human bias that we have as humans and that you know in research that you need, so uh, uh, demand effects, which is essentially the participant telling you what he thinks you want to hear, we want them to kind of do it too. We want to reproduce as much of human biases as possible, as in human as a whole, but not bias towards a particular population. You won't, we don't want them to prioritize straight white males in some sense in comparison to non-straight white males. So we have systems for that. And how do we go about be of average? Uh, uh, it's another thing, it, which is essentially this is, if you're doing a study and you know already some stuff to be true, so shared custody parents, parents who are separated uh, uh, and need to manage the kids between two homes. If you already know that communication problems are a challenge, that scheduling conflicts are a challenge, that uh, expenses are a challenge, you can use that in the research goal and saying, I already know about this, don't focus on that, go for other aspects that might be relevant here. Ask for extensions and focus on gaps. So how are we different from ChatGPT? Our system is quite complex. This is not really true because I killed this. I killed the, the surveys and the quant researchers. But we have quite a complicated system. We shuffle between different models. Each of the models from the providers, even from the same provider, different models have different kinds of biases. So we use different models on our tasks and in our studies to try to compensate for any particular bias that one of the models has, so kind of to dilute those biases. We also offer RAG on our enterprise offering, essentially upload your documents, we're going to use them as sources to complement. We do the ocean model, those who are from psychology know uh, that this is kind of the, the most well-studied uh, uh, framework for personality. We're moving into agents and this is Kate Morgan. Uh, Kate Morgan is a VP of research in Nielsen Group. I think if you do UX, if you do user research, you know Nielsen Norman, they're kind of the staple, uh, uh, at least they were some years ago. And she tweeted this or posted this on LinkedIn. This, most people that work on this kind of stuff are, are on LinkedIn. Um, and, and this goes, takes me back to, to what I was saying before, which is user research as a whole doesn't mean that you're always talking to users. There's a lot of ways of doing user research that doesn't involve talking to users, uh, directly at least. These are proxies that can help you do 80% of what might take you uh, a week in a couple of hours. These are products that can help you get the lay of the land so you can then focus on the most interesting stuff and invest your valuable time with humans for those particular tasks. So there's a lot of stuff that these products can help you do um, and to move your, your, what your goal should be, which is to bring valuable insights and things that make a difference to the companies you work for. So focus on the outcomes, not on the process itself. Less about techniques. This synthetic users and synthetic research and whatever companies are going to pop up in this space, I think everyone in five years will use them at some level. It's as it always was. There are tools in your toolbox. They're not supposed to replace everything that was before. They're not supposed to be, oh my God, now this solves all my problems. They are tools in your toolbox. And as any tool, they have learning curves, uh, curves and you need to learn how to use them. But if you figure out where they can fit in your process, they probably can help you at, in some points of that. Um, future, We're, we started with prompts, it was just a prompt. Initial products, initial prototypes was just a prompt. Can you pretend to be like this, like that? 
Then we moved into flows. Now, an interview in, our, in my system take, takes about fifth, one interview, 50 API calls from the beginning to the end. Um, now we're moving into agents. So what you saw there was I, you give me an audience, you give me a research goal, and I create um, some interviews with synthetic users and all. In a couple of weeks, we're going to deploy a system in which you give me an audience, you give me a research goal, and let's use uh, your example. It's going to suggest, okay, let's talk to investors. Now let's also generate a study in which we, we uh, uh, speak with startup founders that got funding from those investors, trying to figure out how was, were their interaction. Let's now talk to uh, journalists that cover this space and also are aware of some possible patterns. So instead of suggesting just a study of just running one study for you, what we're going to do is we're going to break down your high level goal into multiple studies that you just need to click one button. We run them all in the background. You can still check them in the same interface you saw here today, but you then can create a report with different angles and different perspectives all comp complementing each other towards the goal of bringing you clarity uh, to your research question. I don't know how I am with time. Um, and this is one of the things that I'm, this, this is just something that I prototyped the other day, which is, I was thinking, how can I give a little bit of control instead of being just this, oh, give me this, and I suggest four studies or five studies. How can I bring control to the people who are using my platform? So I did this prototype of, do you prefer to focus more on the individual aspects? Do you prefer to focus more on the social? Do you want to go for depth? Do you want to go for that aspect, but really in depth? Or do you want to go for breath? So this was essentially just a prototype. And that's it. Mm -hmm.